OpenAI, the creators of ChatGPT, have been teasing for some time the release of a local AI model. Well, it's finally here, and it's called GPT OSS. And being a local model means that it's running completely on your machine. It's not connected to the internet, it's not connected to OpenAI servers. So if you ever need to upload any sensitive documents or have it evaluate like company secrets, it can do that all on your machine without an internet connection, making sure it's secure. I have it running on the local AI PC that I built earlier this year. But let's actually dive right in and see how it compares to the regular version of ChatGPT. Loading GPT OSS, I, I have it here running in LM Studio. It's, it's actually really easy to get downloaded and get running. Once it's loaded, this 20 billion parameter model, it can run on most mid-tier machines. So here I asked GPT OSS to kind of just give a summary of this musician I've been following. And GPT OSS actually does a brilliant job uh, explaining kind of like the sonic distinction that this musician brings. And I asked the same question to ChatGPT, which again is connected to OpenAI servers, and it gave me a very similar kind of response. So I, I was really impressed with that. The other thing I'm also really stunned with GPT OSS is just how fast it's able to get things done. I've been testing the other local AI models and it does take a lot of time to get these responses out, but GPT OSS actually is running pretty efficiently. Uh, one reason why I think it is running efficiently is that you can adjust the reasoning effort. Here at the bottom, you can do low, medium, and high. I've kept it on low just because uh, on medium and high, I'm not getting great results. It's more like the first version of ChatGPT that released in 2023, uh, GPT 3.5. You're getting, you know, not the most robust responses, but you're getting like good, good responses overall. One good indication of this is that I asked both ChatGPT and GPT OSS to write a poem about a cat exploring a library. On GPT OSS, the poem isn't as dense. The rhyming schemes aren't as like clever and whereas on chat gpt it honestly does does read better the other problem that i found with gpt oss is that it makes up stuff right which was very indicative of the early version of chat gpt so here i was asking it to explain kind of mrna vaccines why they're important and what it would mean if the u.s government was to suddenly cut research funding i also asked it to like provide sources where it could now again this model is running completely locally so it's not connected to the internet so if it's going to cite a source, it's going to be whatever's in its training data. The sources that it cites just don't exist. I was trying to find these sources on Google, could not find them. Maybe as a research tool, don't refer to GPT OSS, you know, definitely use maybe ChatGPT Deep Research or Gemini or Claude, uh, one of the uh, online models that can really link to the internet and be able to pull up some of this stuff. So really, you would want to maybe use GPT OSS for maybe more secure communication. Maybe if you want like an AI boyfriend or girlfriend, you can kind of just have fun here. There's still a lot to kind of explore um, with these local AI models. I think OpenAI has done a really good job with this 20 billion parameter model. There's still a lot more that needs to be done. I'm excited to see what OpenAI and the other AI companies have next. Uh, stay tuned to CNET for more.